This video presentation will provide a general orientation to Genogram Maker Millennium. When you first open Genogram Maker Millennium, you will notice that virtually your entire screen is available for the workspace you may use to create and refine your genogram. Your screen is not cluttered with icons and menus. There are more than 70 command icons used in Genogram Maker Millennium, but only a few of those appear at any one time. They appear only as you need them to generate or modify an element in your genogram. You may notice at the top left of your screen, there are nine icon buttons in a grouping. This cluster of buttons is the toolpad. The toolpad is used to specify what will happen when you click in an empty area of the workspace. Below the toolpad, in the left-hand margin, another cluster of buttons will appear when you first create or select an element. That will be the property pad. The property pad will change depending on the elements selected in your genogram. The property pad will appear here. We will open the sample genogram to observe a few of the more commonly used buttons. A genogram consists of diverse elements, squares and circles representing people. Here we see a square representing Edward O'Neill and a circle representing Mary. Horizontal and vertical lines represent a partnership, such as a marriage, an affair, or living together. Here, the lines connecting Edward and Mary represent a marriage couple. Diagonal lines define interactional patterns. Notice the diagonal line highlighted here between Edward and James is a jagged line. This indicates a hostile relationship between Edward and his son, James. The fourth type of element is the text block. Text blocks are used to provide further description about an individual within the genogram. Several text blocks have been used to further describe Edward O'Neill. If we click on the text surrounding Edward O'Neill figure, and then click on the Edit Text icon at the bottom left of our screen, we see that the associated text blocks entry pad will appear below the genogram workspace. Several of these have been used, and even more are available if needed. Only those items that have had text entered will appear in the genogram. We can close the text block's entry pad and return the workspace to maximum area by again clicking the Edit Text icon. You may have already noticed that as the cursor hovers over a button, a written description of that button will appear. This is a pop-up hint. Pop-up hints are especially useful to beginning users of Genogram Maker Millennium or when a more experienced user is using a button with which they are not familiar. A row of very useful buttons remains present above your Genogram workspace at all times. If you must make a mistake, while creating your genogram, you can cancel it by clicking on the Undo button. You can click the Undo button multiple times to step back through the last few actions you have taken. The Redo button can be used to step forward and recover one or more steps, which may have been canceled. An element can be deleted from your genogram by first selecting the element and then clicking on the delete button. We'll select Mary and the delete button. 
we will return Mary to our genogram using the undo button. Depending on the size of your genogram, you may want to zoom in or zoom out. To zoom in, out, and restore the default size of your genogram, use the three buttons that look like a magnifying glass. The Zoom In button will increase the size of your genogram, while the Zoom Out button will reduce it. And the Normal Size button will return the genogram to the default size. As you develop your genogram, it may become imbalanced on your workspace. To center the genogram, click the Center button. If an element is selected in your genogram, that element will be centered in the workspace. You may notice we have the figure for Mary highlighted. If we click the center button, Mary is centered in the workspace. To center the entire genogram in the workspace, all elements must be deselected. To deselect an element, click in the gray space in the margin to the left of the workspace. Now with all elements deselected, we can use the center button to center the entire genogram. You are likely to want to export an image from your, of your genogram to another document such as Word, PowerPoint, and other similar documents. The entire genogram can be copied by clicking the Copy Entire Document to Clipboard icon, which looks like a camera. Then, by opening the document to which you would like to export your genogram and pasting at the desired location in the document, your genogram image will be added to your document. The genogram can be saved by clicking on the Save icon. This will open a dialog box. If you are saving the document for the first time, you will be given a Save As prompt, indicating you need to name the document and identify the location to which you want the document saved. The Open button can be used to open an existing genogram document. When you click this button, a dialog box will appear asking if you would like to save changes. This is very important because opening a new genogram document will close the current document. If the current document is closed without first saving all work done since the document was last saved, the work will be lost. A completely new genogram document can be created using the New button. As with the opening of an existing document, creating a new genogram document will close your current document. At this point, you are again prompted by the dialog box prompt asking if you would like to save changes. These several icons located just above your workspace can be very handy. They are easy for the new user to learn and provide a shortcut for the experienced Genogram Maker Millennium user. But the menu items at the top of the screen, File, Edit, View, Pen, Text, and Help, can be used to perform these functions and many more. You will want to take time to become familiar with each of these. This completes Orientation to Genogram Maker Millennium, Part 1. In, ori in Orientation to Genogram Maker Millennium, Part 2, we will use some of the commands we have covered to create a simple genogram.